so I had asked you to uh, read a journal article um, by my good friend Lauren Kajikawa, um, which he actually extrapolated uh, into a chapter in a book called Sounding Race and Rap, which I've, I've recommended to some of y'all and will recommend that some of y'all um, you know, check out where he talks about how race is articulated through rap music. Um, and this chapter that you read uh, of his, uh, or not chapter, journal article became a chapter in that book. But in, in that article, he references Hess and um, looks at how Hess, you know, uh, explores whiteness in, in, in rap music, specifically how white rappers have negotiated and uh, handled questions uh, about authenticity as it relates to, to, their, to their race. And, you know, in doing such, uh, you know, and asking these, these questions is, you know, how, how do, you know, if, if we think to McLeod, you know, how are, is white fake, you know, how have, how has this been dealt with, how has this manifested, how has this been seen in rap music? And he comes up with three categories uh, for w white rappers. Uh, the first is imitative, okay, where uh, basically um, white rappers try to imitate, um, you know, blackness. And what I mean by blackness is is the the uh, the how blackness has been performed and presented um, in rap music, in music video, uh, in popular culture, um, etc., and how that has been imitated and appropriated. Um, the other technique for dealing with questions of authenticity uh, is, uh, is immersion, where um, uh, white rappers try to show their proximity to essentially to black people or to black culture by immersing themselves in it and presenting themselves in that way. And then the last way is the ironic way, the inversive way, the parody way where whiteness is put on display, where whiteness is performed, um, you know, and, and ridiculed in some ways. Okay, and so we'll explore these categories in the first part of today's um, module, uh, and, then we'll, and then we'll move on to look at rappers like um, Jin um, and a few, a few other Asian rappers, and then Kid Frost, um, and some uh, Latinx rappers um, and how they've dealt with race. But, you know, we have an image, you know, here of Marky Mark. This is Mark Wahlberg, uh, Marky Mark and the Funky uh, Bunch, um, which the Funky Bunch was all uh, black dudes. Uh, and, and you had Marky Mark, um, Mark Wahlberg. Um, and, you know, Mark was rhyming poorly. Um, and man, it was bad, but it, you know, his, his, you know, vibe was bizarre. So y'all should check out some of that stuff if you just want to um, be annoyed <laughs> or see, you know, part of Mark Wahlberg's past that, you know, maybe you don't need to see, but I lived through it. So, um, but anyways, I like to kind of bring that up because it kind of, you know, Mark did two things here, you know, um, partly imitative, uh, cultural appropriation, um, but also immersive, you know, um, by having a funky bunch uh, of, of black people. You know, he tried to show, like, he was cool with black people, and therefore um, it sort of, you know, made his appropriation seem less appropriation-y. Um, and that was his, his tactic, but it's, it's bad. <laughs> um, so the first example of imitative, and, and there's plenty of them that you can look, look at in the history of, of rap music. Um, but the probably the clear winner, uh, well, let's say loser <laughs> of this is Vanilla Ice. Uh, even y'all 20 year olds probably know who Vanilla Ice is. You probably have a semblance of knowledge of who Vanilla Ice is. He's a pop, you know, culture figure icon. Um, in giant douche as well, <laughs> just you know, just to put that out there. Um, I remember when Ice Ice Baby came out. Uh, gosh, I must have been ten or eleven. I mean, it you know, and I was into Public Enemy and KRS One, you know, Boogie Down Productions and stuff like that. I was appalled um, on my bus rides to school 
my peers and, and their, their, their musical taste. It was very, very disheartening. Um, but anyways, so Eminem's style is imitative. Um, basically, he tried to imitate this sort of stereotypical projection of, of blackness on screen and through music by the way he talked, the way that he, he tried to dress, the way that he spoke in interviews about himself, and the way that he lied about his past. So the big thing about uh, Vanilla Ice, whose real name is Robert Van Winkle, you may, may know him from like um, reality television shows, but Robert Van Winkle, um, you know, basically kind of tried to say he was from, you know, the tough, the tough streets of Miami. And you know, if you know anything about Miami, you, you know that it, do, it does have some really, you know, really rough neighborhoods, um, you know, you know, gang, gang heavy neighborhoods down there in South Florida. Um, you know, dr a lot of drug trafficking, all that stuff. Um, and basically tried to say like he came up and came out of out of out of a you know ghetto upbringing and and that was his way of suggesting that he was authentic but uh, you know is that he he had lived you know this ghetto um, you know which ghetto at the time equal black um, you know upbringing and this is why you know his his raps weren't fake his his shit was real. Um, then what happened was after he had incredible success, I mean, Ice Ice Baby and that record was, I don't even know how huge. And it's the record that's, you know, um, samples uh, uh, Queen and David Bowie's uh, song that, you know, Eminem's like, I mean, um, Villain Ice is like, no, their song went dun, 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 dun. And my song goes dun, 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 you know. <laughs> You know, uh, he did he did get sued for that, um, you know, pretty lazy stuff. But uh, that record went and did bajillions, you know, and that's part of the whole imitative and, and critique of so many um, successful white rappers is is that so many of them have been really bad, um, but they have gone to sell mad units and be really popular because they're white. And there's a lot of white people in America. You know what I'm saying? And um, having that friendly face in the marketplace for the for your average consumer you know, sold records, you know, and the kind of the gimmick of it. But um, a, a, few, a few years into his career, I believe it was some college, uh, college students at a college newspaper uh, did a little research on uh, Mr. Robert Van Winkle. And they actually found out that he was from like a very nice uh, upper middle class upbringing in Dallas. <laughs> um, he, you know, uh, I mean, he, he, he did live in Miami as well, but, you know, he was not in any way, uh, you know, uh, uh, had a rough upbringing in, in the hoods of Miami. Like he, he that is just a complete... Um, lie and it was very clear from the outset to anybody in hip-hop music um, fans of authentic real hip-hop um, producers makers of that music that this was a, perf a, a, a bad performance and it was it was a clear cultural appropriation and it was a it was a bad um, you know corny one it was almost like the really bad cereal commercials with rapping on it, trying to sell you fucking Wheaties or whatever um, from maybe like 15 years ago or 20 years ago, or it's just really bad. Um, and that's what it was. And he's been labeled as the Elvis of, of rap, you know. Um, you know, Elvis, you know, got his whole style from black artists. And basically, you know, Chuck Berry, uh, you know, Little Richard and those dudes, you know, in, started rock and roll but the king of, of rock the person who did mad mad pushed mad records sold mad units was the appropriator the the the, the one that the the record labels could market to the masses because of his, his skin which was elvis you know and um you know eminem was to rap what elvis was to rock you know at the time although elvis has a longer 
much longer legacy. Uh, uh, vanilla Ice <laughs> went away pretty quickly. Um, but you could see this, you know, really funny uh, Jim Carrey. Uh, if y'all if y'all have never seen it, uh, y'all should check out um, In Living Color. It was a really funny, like, sketch, sketch comedy uh, show by the Wayne's Brothers. And uh, Jim Carrey in the, in the early 90s, really funny. Uh, wacky stuff, but uh, this is a good, good old parody of Vanilla Ice, who got roasted. The dude got roasted so hard, um, you know, so many times. He got, he was just a roast show, um, you know, and made fun of just for all, all of this. But people bought it. They ate it up. Hey, kitty, they ate it up. You know, you want to come up here? This is Gray Boy. Um, and I'm out. Uh, anyways, this is a classic Vanilla Ice quote. Uh, I'm from the streets. That's where I learned to dance and rap. It should be obvious to anybody's eye that a white guy doing what I'm doing had to be exposed to the streets. <laughs> Yo. So bad. It's just so. It's just so painful. It's like, as a white person, you know, that loves rap music and hip hop culture. It's just, even at, when I was ten, I was just like, oh, this is so bad. You know, I didn't really know. I didn't know what cultural appropriation was or nothing. But it was obviously so goddamn bad. It was just a bad performance. But people ate it up ate it the fuck up. Soccer moms, you know, everywhere. Now, if I ever play this song at like a wedding or whatever, when I, when I do do weddings and stuff, you know, white people still go bonkers for it. And it's the same people who loved it when they were fucking 14 years old in 1992 or whatever, you know. Anyways. Hey, bud. Careful, it's like a 30 foot Yo, drop, brother. Um, but Bill and I's whole style was clearly fake, clearly cultural appropriation. So that's the, Im that's the imitative. Now, 